Welcome to a Legendarium special about Snefru, ancient Egypt's first pyramid builder. In this episode, we will talk about the fourth dynasty king who began raising ancient Egypt's most iconic monuments. Snefru became the first king of ancient Egypt's fourth dynasty, which ruled the kingdom from 2575 to 2465 BC. His name translates as to make beautiful. Snefru came from a powerful family in Middle Egypt, which lived near the city of Hermopolis. He likely came to the throne by marrying the royal heiress Hetaperis, his predecessor's daughter. Given ancient Egyptian royal marriages, he may well have married his own half-sister. Beyond that, little is known about his life prior to taking the throne or why his reign marked a change of dynasty. Records of his reign are sparse, but it is clear from cemeteries around his own pyramid that he made members of the royal family his state officers. To finance the royal household and the army, Snefru owned vast estates across the kingdom, almost certainly inherited from his predecessor. The office of vizier or chief chief minister became especially important, and its holders tended to be princes close to the succession. This served as a means to train heirs in governing the kingdom before they took the throne. In the Sinai, Snefru also owned several turquoise mines that kept his treasury full, but he needed more to realize his plans. During his reign, Snefru led a huge raid southward into Nubia, leading warriors who fought with flint axes and clubs. In Nubia, Snefru captured much loot, most importantly herds of cattle, sheep, and goats, numbering in the tens of thousands. The royal army also brought back thousands of captives who were forced to labor on monumental construction projects. Later in his reign, Snefru led a smaller westward expedition against the Libyans. Back home, Egyptian artists tried new ways of depicting images within tombs. Scholars have found tombs with some wall decorations painted on plaster and others carved into the walls. It seems that Snefru's craftsmen tried to determine which method ensured the images would last longer. But today, Snefru is most famous for the construction of three pyramids. Previous kings built mastabas, rectangular and flat-roofed buildings made from mud brick, to serve as their tombs. During the Third Dynasty, the great architect Imhotep designed the Step Pyramid of Djoser, essentially several mastabas stacked on top of one another. Now Snefru presided over a period of expansion and innovation. Royal builders originally raised the first true pyramid at Maidom as a step pyramid, but later added an outer casing at Snefru's direction. That explains its peculiar appearance and why it is not considered to be the first true smooth-sided pyramid. The second of Snefru's pyramid is at Dashur. It is called the Bent Pyramid and the first ever to be designed as a true pyramid from the beginning. Its original slope was 55 degrees, but the rock beneath the pyramid was unstable. This caused the pyramid to crack and the builders constructed a casing around the base. The rest of the pyramid had to be built at a 43 degree angle, which gives it a bent shape. This is a reminder that ancient Egyptian culture did not simply spring out of nowhere, but was built on innovation and experiments. Some years later, Snefru's finally built the first true pyramid, which is remembered as the Red Pyramid. It stands more than 300 feet tall, the fourth tallest of all Egyptian pyramids. It is thought that the king was buried here, but this is uncertain as scholars never found or identified Snefru's body. Snefru made the core of his pyramid out of red limestone, which gave the pyramid its name. Originally, the builders also covered it in white limestone, so it glowed in the desert sun, but later kings looted Snefru's casing to build their own monuments. 
All three of Snefru's pyramids included funerary complexes, courtyards, temples, and a cult pyramid that served as places of worship for the cult which worshipped the dead king. After 24 years on the throne, Snefru went to the gods and his son Khufu took the throne. He and his builders learned their lessons well, and Khufu became the renowned builder of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Later tradition viewed Snefru's reign as a golden age. They imagined Snefru as a benevolent ruler, and many places named for him kept their names long after his death. The fourth pyramid, the fourth dynasty that Snefru founded, marked ancient Egypt's golden age, during which it built the iconic pyramids that today dot the Nile River Valley. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.